Now, let's say that the original light was oscillating only like this. The original light came from electric fields that were only oscillating like this. So what type of oscillations will you have here? Will you have into and out of the board? No. no. Um, and what will you get here? Nothing. Because we're assuming we're at the Brewster angle. If you're at the Brewster angle, of course, if we weren't at the Brewster angle, we would get something. But if we assume we're at the Brewster angle, this is the one type that you can't get. Because again, um, it would be oscillating parallel to the direction that the beam, the reflected beam, has to go. So is this light polarized or unpolarized? And this would be, and then this would be non-existent. All right, and one last example. Let's say that the original electric fields are oscillating into and out of the board. What would the electric fields look like on the transmitted light? And would we get a reflected ray? And what would be the direction of the electric fields here? Oh, wait. Maybe you would. Well, you you're only, you're only oscillating this way. Well, you, you, you wouldn't get one. No, you would get one into and out of the board. And what direction would the electric fields be oscillating here? Into and out of the board. And there's no problem with that, because then the direction of propagation would be perpendicular to the direction of the electric field oscillation. OK. So this is perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, the only problem is when you have electric fields that are propagating in the same direction as the wave is moving. But here the wave is moving in the plane of the page, and the electric fields are oscillating perpendicular to the page. So um, is this light polarized? Uh, yeah. Yeah? And how about this light? Yeah. And how about this light? Polarized. Yeah. And by the way, did the intensity, uh, well, nah, I won't even get into that. Good enough. OK, so there's a bunch of different cases that we can go through there. OK, well, that covers some of the, the aspects there. Okay, so we went through some uh, stuff, um, but as usual, my first recommendation would be before you uh, do some new problems, redo the stuff that we've gone through. It sounds like you already had a chance to redo a lot of the stuff we did in our last session, so that's great. If you did miss anything, you should go back and do that again. One thing we saw today is the importance of constantly repeating the eye problems. The only way you really get comfortable with eye problems and inoculate yourself against the traps is by falling into the same trap five or ten times. Yeah. And then by the tenth time, you eventually start to get it, you know, you start to get, see, I'm sick of falling into that trap, and you learn about it. That, that's, that's what happened with me, anyway. It took a lot of repetition before I started getting uh, somewhat comfortable with that. So you want to do that repetition. Um, more important than trying to do a little bit of every single concept in the class is making sure you're comfortable with the most important topics. Yeah. So make sure you go back and redo, again, um, so like optics problems and eye problems, because that's what you know will be on the test. You know there'll be lenses and mirrors, and very likely there'll be eyes. You want to do a lot of repetition on that to make sure you're comfortable with that. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.